Hi friends, I am standing before you to make a few videos on this subject. Uh, one student from Sagar has sent me a few problems. He wants these problems on applied thermal engineering. All these problems are on steam turbines. On steam turbines. Now, they are all very similar to each other. Anyway, he has asked. I will try to solve a few of them. Uh, you can, this thing. Now, I <laughs> will take this problem. A single stage impulse rotor has a blade ring dia, has a blade ring dia of 57.5 cm. This is the diameter of the wheel. The diameter of the wheel is 57.5 centimeter it is given and the blade is rotating at a speed of that is n is 10,000 rpm the speed of the blades is 10,000 rpm this is the speed now the nozzles are inclined at 20 degree to the direction of motion of the blades that is alpha. This is nozzle angle at inlet it is called. Alpha is 20 degree. Alpha is 20 degree. So there is this thing. Uh, to this direction of motion of blades and the velocity of the issuing steam that is B, capital B. The steam entering the nozzle or leaving the uh, sorry, leaving the nozzle or entering the turbine is same, 1050, 1050 meters per second, meters per second. Uh, find the inlet blade angle in order that steam enters the blade passage without shock. That is, we have to find out theta inlet blade angle is denoted by theta we have to find this out next next the assuming the friction coefficient of blading that is k or it is nothing but vr1 by vr is 0 0.85 0 0.85 and assuming inlet and outlet, outlet angles are equal or the blade angles are symmetrical phi e and theta are equal uh, find the power developed power developed for a steam supply of 1350 kg per hour what is the power developed? You have to find mass of steam flowing is how much? 1350 kg per hour. Kg per hour. Then he has also asked us to find out the diagram efficiency. Diagram efficiency or blade efficiency it is also called. And other things. Loss of kinetic energy due to friction. Late friction. Okay, that's of not very important. Now, here the first thing that you have to do is you have to find out the blade velocity. In all other problems, I think the blade velocity is given. In this problem, the blade velocity is not given directly. The blade velocity is not given here. In all other problems, they have given blade velocity. Here, it is given indirect. That is, they have given these two. Now, you can convert this into meters. It will be 0.575 meter. So, blade velocity. Blade velocity. Now, different 
uh, books use different notations. Somebody calls it as u, somebody calls it as small b, somebody calls it as bb. Like that, different, different, different notations are used. You can use whichever one you are convenient with. So this will be pi d n by 60. Pi d n by 60. So many meters per second. This is the formula for finding that. In other problems, it is directly given. Blade velocity is so much. In this problem, it is not given. So I have chosen this. So this will be pi into 0.575. 575 multiplied by 1000. No, no, it's not 1000, it is 10,000. Sorry, this is 10,000. RPM is 10,000. So into 10,000 divided by 60. So, how much does it work out? Oh, let us see. 5 into 0.575 into 10,000 divided by 60 equals it works out to 301 point something point zero something so you can take it as 301 meters per second or if you are doing it graphically if you are uh, solving the problem graphically here it is not said anything you can do it either graphically or analytically if they have not said it if you are doing it uh, by graphical method you will have to take this as 300 only otherwise you cannot do it now here this can be solved either by graphical method that is by constructing uh, velocity triangles or you can do it analytically also because it is not given. It's not given. So if you are doing it by graphical method, by if you are doing it by graphical method, what you have to do is you have to select a suitable scale. Scale is to be selected first. So one centimeter is equal to. You can take it as hundred meters per second. If you take it as hundred meters per second. This capital V will be 10.5 centimeter. 1050 divided by 100 will give you 10.5 centimeter. And this will be 3 centimeters. Roughly 3 centimeters. And that's what I said. You will have to take it as 300 meter per second. If you take it as 301, it will be 3.01 centimeter. So you can't measure 3.01 centimeter accurately. So you have to take it as 3 cm only. Next what you do after taking this scale, you will draw a horizontal line. You will draw a horizontal line. On this line, on this horizontal line, what you have to do is, you draw a horizontal line like this. On this line, you mark that 301, 301, that is 3 centimeters you mark. So this is V, small v, blade velocity. Its length is 3 centimeter. Because it is 300 meters per second, it is represented by a line of length 3 centimeters, 3 centimeters width. Now, some students have doubt whether we should take this side or this side. You can take any side, any side, inlet. If you take inlet this side, outlet will be that side. If you take inlet that side, outlet will be this side. That's all the difference. It makes no difference. Now, in the previous my videos, I think I have taken inlet that side, exit this side, outlet this side. So now, for a change, I will take inlet this side, outlet that side. It doesn't make any difference for values. Now on this, if you are taking this side, what you have to do is take your protractor, keep it here and a, draw a line which is inclined by alpha here. The alpha value is given in the problem. 
alpha value is 20 degrees so this will be you make a measure 20 degree angle draw a line on this line you mark a distance of 10.5 cm from here 10.5 cm let us say it comes somewhere here somewhere there it comes this is b i don't know i can't measure it here so anyway that is v that is the velocity of steam entering the uh, turbine and or leaving the nozzle whatever you call it then you got v then you join this line to this point to this point this is your vr relative velocity at inlet then drop a perpendicular here drop a perpendicular here now this angle is theta inlet blade angle blade angle at inlet now this is vf velocity of flow at inlet and this is this is vw velocity of will at inlet and this is our small v small v now this is the inlet velocity is completed inlet velocity triangle is completed now he wants you to find out theta what you have to do is you have to measure this angle using a protractor measure it write theta is equal to so many degrees it will be bigger than alpha it should be bigger than alpha this angle will be bigger than the uh, nozzle angle at inlet so this is done this is done next he says theta is equal to 5 the blade angles are symmetrical so on the for that side you have to for exit you require this so phi will be same as theta now this measure this measure this length vf is equal to multiply that length by 100 you will get in meters per second measure this length multiply by that length by 100 that scale factor you will get the value of vw measure this line you will get the value of vr vr value you will get multiplied by 100 you will get it in meters per second so all these values you got v, we will get vf vw and vr and you also get this theta you will get those four values right then then what you have to do is you have to construct the exit velocity triangle for exit velocity triangle he has says phi is same as theta so draw a line from here at an angle phi now this phi will be same as theta whatever angle is here you draw a line of inclined at same angle now if you had not given this you would have taken vr1 as equal to vr but since he has given this one now vr1 vr1 will be 0.85 into vr that is called friction factor or he can say there is a loss of 15 percent of the blades due to friction that way also you can say so you measure, you calculate that and then mark the distance here so then, then. now this will be shorter than this if it was same vr and vr1 were equal then you would have got it of same length now it will be short so this is vr1 that is 0.85 into vr next what you do join this point to this point this is v1 velocity at the exit this is draw a perpendicular this is vf1 this is vw1 when this angle is beta nozzle angle at the exit so these things again you will have to measure those and get the values now after this what you have to do is you have to find out these two you have to find out the power developed and the diagram efficiency or the blade efficiency so for that you have to use the formula you have to substitute the values you know p is equal to power is equal to m ms mass of steel this should be 
converted per second. This is this will be thirteen fifty divided by three thousand six hundred. That is divided by sixty into sixty. Thirteen fifty. This will be thirteen fifty divided by sixty into sixty, or three thousand six hundred, because I am converting it into per second, kg per second. Thirteen fifty divided by three thousand six hundred. Give me point three seven five. Point three seven five. kg per second so substitute here ms is that value per second into vw plus r minus vw1 into blade velocity divided by 1000 so many kilowatts i get it in kilowatts then diagram efficiency or blade efficiency will be uh 2 into vw plus r minus vw1 Into small v divided by capital V square. This will give me the diagram efficiency. If you multiply it by hundred, you will get it in percentage. In percentage, if you want. Now this is how it should be done. Now, now, <coughs> if you are doing it by analytical method, then there is no necessity to take this scale. There is no necessity to take the scale. You draw a rough diagram. You draw a rough diagram. Call this as A, B, C, D, E, F, like that. You give some names. P, Q, R, S, whatever it is. You give some name to that. Now, in triangle A, D, B. A, D, B is a right angle triangle. In triangle ADB, in triangle ADB, ADB, ah, uh, sine alpha is sine alpha is this alpha, you know. Sine alpha is opposite by hypotenuse. That is B F by B. So therefore B F will be equal to B into sine alpha. B into sine alpha. So I get this. How B is thousand fifty into sine of twenty degree. Sine of twenty degree. So if you substitute that and calculate, how much do you get? One zero five zero into sine of twenty degree. You will get one zero five zero into sine of twenty degree. Equals no. I am not getting it properly. One zero five zero. Not getting it. Cos alpha is cos is adjacent by hypotenuse. This is opposite by hypotenuse. So this will be B W by B. That is therefore, so therefore B W will be B into cos alpha. That is thousand fifty into cos. Twenty degree. 
there is some mistake in this, some problem in this. Now you get VW, you get VW and VF, right, then what you have to do is, you take ABC in triangle ABC, that's also a right angle triangle, here it is right angle, now tan theta is, tan theta will be opposite by adjacent that is Vf by Vw minus V. This is from here to here it is Vw, from here to here it is V. So this will be Vw minus V. It's up to here. Vw minus V. So theta will be theta will be tan inverse of Vf by Vw minus V. Now you have Vf you have, Vw you have, V you have, if you substitute those values and you, you get this thing, this will get in degrees. I am very sorry that I am not able to get it here. Okay. You can solve it yourselves. You will get it. Then after getting theta, what you have to do is you have to get this, Vr. Now, <coughs> sin theta is sin of theta you have got theta there after getting theta sin theta is opposite by hypotenuse that is vf by vr vr is the hypotenuse here vf is the opposite side these two therefore vf uh, vr will be equal to vf divided by sin theta so you will get the value of Vr. So after getting the value of Vr, here you come to this side. Now you have to get Vr1. Vr1 is 0.85 into Vr. You will get Vr1. You get phi also because phi is known. If you know theta, theta and phi are equal, it is given. So you get this triangle. Now if you get this triangle here, if you know Vr1 and phi, you can get you can get uh, you can get this VW1 how VW1 will be equal to uh, from here to here it is V plus VW1 that is adjacent side this is hypotenuse so cos phi will be cos phi will be adjacent by hypotenuse V plus VW1, V plus VW1 divided by VR1. So V plus VW1 is equal to VR1 into cos phi. So v, VW1 will be equal to VR1 cos phi, cos phi minus V. Now this value that you get here, may be either positive or negative. If it is positive, if it is the value is positive here, in this formula you will take plus. If it is negative, you will take that as minus. That's it. Now, after that, after finding VW1, if you get VW1, you can get VFN also you can get, but that is all not necessary. This, this, they are not necessary. If you get VW and VW1, you can solve this you can get the power and the diagram efficiency. There is some mistake here. I think this calculator is not working properly. Otherwise, I could have solved it. No, I am getting some strange values. There is something wrong with this.
this uh, sin cos tan, these functions I am not able to get here. Sorry, uh, otherwise I could have done it. You have to do it like this and get that value. This is it.